Well, here's a story that didn't get enough attention. The U.S. Navy has enacted new rules for reporting UFOs. Many of its pilots see things they can't explain. Why the change? We'll ask an expert after the break. The Navy did just confirm that it is drafting new guidelines for personnel to report encounters with, quote, unidentified aircraft. The goal is to destigmatize the sightings of advanced, very high speed aircraft that have been seen quite frequently approaching Navy ships and facilities without explanation. And the Navy issued a statement that said, in part, this quote, there have been a number of reports of unauthorized and or unidentified aircraft entering various military control ranges and designated airspace in recent years. For safety and con security concerns, the Navy and the U.S. Air Force take these reports very seriously and investigate each and every report. As part of this effort, the Navy is updating and formalizing the process by which reports of any such suspected incursions can be made to the cognizant authorities." Unquote. Chris Mellon is a former Pentagon intelligence official. He's closely involved in the History Channel's upcoming six-part series, Unteden Unidentified, Inside America's UFO Investigation. He joins us tonight. Chris, thanks very much for coming on. So we've gone in a pretty short period of time from the U.S. military not really acknowledging that there is such a thing to them acknowledging that these sightings are so frequent they need a formal process for reporting them. What's changed? Yes, uh, thank you, Tucker. It's an extraordinary turnaround, and it's really the result of an interaction between Congress and the Navy. And the fact that this has uh, gotten on, on Congress's uh, radar uh, began some discussions which elevated an issue that uh, before this time had been smothered and kept at low levels of the bureaucracy. So now you have more senior policymaking uh, officials uh, hearing in some cases firsthand from the, the aviators involved and other personnel. Um, they're learning the reality of the issue and they're asking some, some uh, direct and uh, sometimes tough questions. And so this has uh, elevated this entire issue within the department and Kudos to both for engaging well, and yeah. really listening to our men and women in uniform uh, who've been squelched in the past, who've uh, really been treated with uh, disdain sometimes for, for reporting what the, what's happening. Well, I mean, and pilots, of course, are trained to discern between aircraft and weather balloons. So, like, if there's one group you should listen to, it's pilots. How often are these sightings reported? Do we know? Uh, we don't know. We believe that probably eight or nine times out of ten they are not reported when there's an encounter. We know from numerous uh, debriefings and interviews uh, that individuals in squadrons when they when they bring a forward story a story forward they're the only individual in their squadron usually who's willing to do so or have that discussion. We see the same thing among commercial airline pilots. Um, it's it's not career enhancing to say the least. Uh, we know these individuals are often ridiculed, and um, it, we're in the past, which is partly why this is such an important development. They're saying it's a legitimate issue now. You can talk about it. So, but what do they think? I mean, some of the, I was just reading this morning, some of these sightings, again, by military pilots who know the difference, estimate that these are objects moving at 15,000 miles per hour, for example. I mean, that's so much faster than any object, human-made object has ever, tra ever traveled that we're aware of. So what do they think that is? What's the going theory on this? <clears throat> yeah, this is um, tough terrain. There are three hypotheses that, that people have put forward, and none of them are, are very comfortable. Uh, one is that one of our adversaries has leapfrogged us technologically, China or Russia. Uh, Putin has been making some extraordinary claims about uh, Russian technology. Um, another theory is that these are some test aircraft of the U.S. I think we can discard that now with the Navy itself acknowledging right. these are not American. And the third uh, popular theory, of course, is that these may be from some uh, civilization elsewhere beyond our solar system. And uh, none of these, these theories are very comfortable to contemplate, but we have to look at facts and derive theories from facts, not start with theories and disrule or, or rule out facts. I mean, I, I hope this will get us a lot closer to doing this. Just very quickly, are, are the results of these surveys going to be made public at any point? Um, at to the Stars Academy of Arts and Sciences, uh, my colleagues and I, we have drafted some proposed legislation for Congress to consider that yeah. would simply ask for a report 
uh, on this. It wouldn't cost any money. Um, right now, let's part demand of the one, is, shall we? Uh, one of, <laughs> one of the problems is yeah, really quick. one of the problems is nobody's in charge. And the, these organizations don't share information, so the information isn't pooled or analyzed. Right. Well, that's always that's the story of government. Chris, thanks so much for everything Thank you do. You. Great to see you. We're back. This universe is a strange one. According to a study covered by LiveScience.com, nearly three in four people have encountered something paranormal. Now, that could mean a simple UFO sighting, but sometimes that means people recall being abducted or haunted by aliens. Creatures far superior to us, who use us for some unknown purpose. Aliens are so much more sinister and terrifying. You may be wondering why. This mental image that a flying saucer will circle the White House lawn, land on the White House lawn, and give us a bounty of all sorts of technological goodies to initiate an age of Aquarius on the planet Earth. Personally, I don't think that's not gonna happen. Aliens and genes are species that rule the Earth prior to the appearance of human being. Then they had a war with the angels and lost the war. They had to vacate the earth and go into hiding. Wouldn't you be bitter if you were a jinn? Gee, realize that they could be thousands, maybe millions of years ahead of us in technology and they may have, well, no interest in interacting with us in the same way that we don't necessarily want to deal with the squirrels and the deer in the forest. Now, some people say that we should not try to make contact with them because they could be potentially dangerous. The leader of one particular alien gene species, Satan or Iblis, has declared a war on human being. Satan or Iblis his goal is to lead human into destruction in this world and eventually into trouble hereafter. When did you hear the last time an alien has contacted a human for a good reason? When did you hear last time aliens have contacted human to work on curing diseases or getting rid of hunger in this world? vast majority of their encounter, if not all, are for sinister reasons. And if you're one of those human that is working with the aliens, beware. You have chosen the wrong friend. Because of the fact that we don't know their intentions. Then the other question is, what happens if they're evil? Well, I think the question of evil is actually a relative question because the real danger to a deer in the forest is not the hunter with a gigantic rifle. He's not the main danger to a deer in the forest. The main danger to a deer in the forest is the developer. The guy with blueprints, the guy in the three-piece suit, the guy with the slide roll and calculator, the guy that's going to pave the forest and perhaps destroy whole ecosystems. Indeed, Satan is an enemy to you. So take him as an enemy. He only invites his party to be among the companions of the blaze. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an army of the angels to fight them. This army of the angels fought them and pushed them out of the land and made them live on the islands of the sea.